welcome to Noble Character Crafts. My name is Amy and I'm coming to you from Eastern Nebraska where I live with my husband and our five children. Today is Friday, October 13th, 2023. A huge welcome to any new or returning viewers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you really enjoy this episode. This is a channel all about my crafty life and today I have knitting, crocheting, and sewing to share with you all. I will have links to the places that you can find me in the description box below, as well as the show notes for this episode. I have a few finished objects to share with you all today. The first is a cowl that I knitted. And last episode, I'm pretty sure, I had showed you a muscle burra hat that I had finished using this yarn. And with the leftovers, I wanted to use it to make this beautiful cowl. This is the second time I have knit this pattern. It is called Falling For You Cowl. And the designer is named Leslie Alcock of Leslie's Lake Life. And she gifted me this pattern a while back. And I absolutely love it. It's a super simple pattern that is easily memorizable and it just works up so beautifully I think I was as I mentioned last time I was a little bit concerned that maybe with this very fluffy yarn the pattern would get hidden or wouldn't show up as well but I still think it shows up beautifully so the yarn that I used for this is called Yarn Inspiration Karen Latte Cakes in the Kissy Kissy colorway it's labeled a bulky weight yarn but I think it really isn't that thick. It, I think it works up more as to a worsted weight. It is 58% um, acrylic and 42% nylon. And it was gifted to me by a viewer of this channel named Kim. And yeah, the um, actually I have the Muscle Burra hat handy. So here's the Muscle Burra hat that I knit up that I showed last time. And I think it will make a neat set I still am surprised that my 10 year old son wants this, <laughs> but he does. He just loves it so much. It is such a cozy, cozy yarn. It's one of those that you maybe have felt before that when you just feel it, it's just like super ultra soft. And so it is really nice and cozy. And this worked up so well. I just knit this when I, when I knit the, I had started on this end and when I had finished doing the six, I think there's six rows of or rounds of the ribbing that you start off with. I weighed my yarn to see how much that took and it had taken 10 grams. And so I just knit until I had 12 grams left over so that I would be sure to have enough to finish off the ribbing at the other end and bind off. And I really only had, oh, I wrote it down. I had 29.5 inches left when I did that. So that worked out well. I'm glad that <laughs> I didn't, you know, wait till I only had 10 grams. I'm glad I gave myself that extra two grams because I needed it. I started this on September 15th and finished it on October 4th. I did go down in my needle size. The recommended needle size is a US 8, but I went down to a US 7, 4.5 millimeter because the first cowl that I made, I'm a loose knitter, and I thought that the first cowl that I made, it turned out great, but I thought that gauge, the, you know, I didn't actually measure the gauge, but I thought it could be a little bit tighter and that it would be a better, it would work up better if it was a little bit tighter. So I went down to my, to the 4.5 millimeter needles and I like how that worked up. It is just such a gorgeous fit. I like this uh, style of cowl that really, you know, keeps its shape up around your neck nicely and it really just makes such a nice cozy cowl so you don't have to worry about it going down too much you know it really works to keep you warm you can pull it up nice and high and it'll it stays on its own so that's great and I just think it's beautiful I love the coziness of it so I think this also is going to be going to my 10 year old son I think he's kind of claimed it as his own <laughs> so that's fine I'm glad that it will be used and that he loves it and that it will keep him warm this upcoming winter. So I am happy for that. That is all on that one. Then my next finished object, my friend Tina has uh, seen an Instagram reel, I believe it was, that someone had posted that said, if you knit or crochet a rectangle and seam it together, 
it will make a cat shaped hat with little ears on it. And so she sent me this reel and she said, I want one. <laughs> so um, I said, okay, I'll knit one for you. And sh last year, I'm pretty sure last year I had knit her a cowl that um, was made using golden colored yarn and then a beautiful rainbow Malabrigo colored yarn together. And uh, she said that she wanted to wear this hat with that cowl, but that it didn't need to match perfectly. But that she thought that would look, that would be fun to have a hat to wear along with the cowl that I made her. A long time ago, she had given me some yarn that um, she had been gifted, I think by one of her daughters that had gone to Germany for something and the daughter had brought back some yarn. Tina didn't know what to make with it though, so she gave it to me to make something out of it instead. So it was two of these little cakes of yarn. Um, it says online, I think, yeah, online trend collection Lenny 238 bang bag no that's what it says <laughs> the color is number two and it is online it is listed as a worsted weight but it's very thick and thin for 50 grams you get 105 meters it's 55 percent cotton and 45 percent rayon and it has gold, orange, green, and charcoal. And you can see the thick and thinness of it. So a lot of the areas are pretty thin, definitely more of like a fingering weight, but then you do also get into thicker parts, even right away, this one. It goes pretty thick and thin. I mean, it just varies quite quickly. Anyway, I um, wanted to use that for her hat, and then I wanted to hold it together to give it a little bit more consistency, and so I had some leftover. Actually, this was the leftovers that I had from the sweater that I wore in my last episode, the gold and white striped sweater, the blue Christmas sweater. It was designed by Tara Kennan of A Loop Through a Loop. Anyway, I had this leftover Knit Picks Comfy Fingering in the Honey Color. That's a fingering weight, 75% Pima Cotton and 25% acrylic. So I held these two yarns together and I did not want to knit a flat rectangle just because I would prefer to knit in the round a hat. So I ended up casting on, um, I cast on 110 stitches and then just worked in the round. And after I had knit an inch or two, I just went back and whip stitched the top seam together to, you know, connect them. So I had 110 stitches and I just knit in the round, but on both sides, I did one purl stitch to make a type of seam and I thought that that would help to help it fold flat to give it the rectangular shape that you want for this cat shaped hat. <laughs> I really like how the fabric worked up with the two yarns held together. It's really fun and it kind of will go along with the cowl that I made for her. Um, it worked up pretty quickly. I used a US 7 again. I think, no, not at all. <laughs> I used a US 4, 3.5 millimeter needles and uh, just completely knit in the round except for those purl stitches. So on each side, you can barely see it because it kind of folds in on itself, of course. But right here is a seam on the side where I did one purl stitch on each edge. I knit it for six inches and then I reduced the stitch count to 104 stitches before I, well, on that first round of doing the ribbing, which is two by two ribbing. And I did that for an inch and a half before I bound off. 
and I will try it on. It's very loose on me. Tina has a larger head circumference than I do, and I, she really doesn't like tight hats, I don't think, either. So it's quite loose on me because I don't have a very large head circumference. And here's the idea that you have these little cat ears. <laughs> so I hope you like it, Tina. <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> So there's the cat hat. I hope you like it. I hope uh, you uh, don't feel silly in it <laughs> and that you like, you think it's cute. <laughs> so anyway, that is the cat hat that I made for Tina. I think that's all I have to say about it. Yeah, I think so. I really hope it fits well for her as well. So hopefully it will be used and loved. But it was a pretty quick project. I started on October 4th and finished it on October 11th. Then I also did a quick little project of making some knitted pumpkins. And I just love how they turned out. They're so cute. I did not follow a pattern for these either. I just did my own thing. So this is the first one I made. And I made both of these in one day, two different days, but they both took only one day. So this one I made on October 4th. I cast on 50 stitches, and again, I worked in the round, so I made basically a tube, and then seamed it up when I was all done. So I cast on 50 stitches, and I did knit four, purl one, all the way around, until it measured four inches in length, and then I just didn't even bind off. I just used a long tail and cinched up those stitches that were live on the needles and closed up the bottom. And then used a, another piece of yarn to close up the top. And then I also took that long piece of yarn and went around in all of the pearl grooves to, I don't know if you'll be able, yeah, here you go. So I wrapped the yarn around each of those grooves. Oh, I had also, I should mention, I looked at some, a pumpkin that I had, a little pumpkin, and I counted the number of segments that it had, and it had 10 segments. So that way, that's how I came up with what I was going to do for doing, I had 10 segments by casting on 50 stitches and then doing knit four, purl one, that gave me 10 sections around. So anyway, I went around each of those little sections with the long tail of yarn to kind of define those little grooves a little bit more. I just love them. And then my children found some sticks for me and I just super glued them in. The yarn that I used was just a remnant that I had left over from a really long time that I've had for a really long time. It's Lion Brand Tweed Stripes in the Woodlands colorway, which is a bulky weight, 100% acrylic yarn. This one took 18 grams of yarn. Oh, and I stuffed it with polyfill also. And yeah, it was just, I just love how it turned out. I think the colors in it are really fun. And I think it's so cute. So then the next one I made a week later on October 11th. <laughs> this one, I only had 15 grams left of this yarn. And so I cast on only 40 stitches for this one and instead did knit three purl one to divide those 40 stitches into 10 different sections. And did the same thing, knit this until it was, actually I, I used up all of the yarn that I had left over, which got me to four and a quarter inches in length. But you really can't tell much difference between the two. Just barely can you tell that this one is a little bit smaller. But they're so cute. On this one, when I was all done, I had a long tail left still, and so I just twisted it in on itself, and it kind of made this little curly vine-like thing, which I love. I think that's a really sweet addition to that pumpkin. So really cute little fall decorations that I was able to work up really quick and easily. For both of these, I used six four millimeter needles. My last finished object is what I'm wearing. I am so excited that I 
have sewn a dress that I am wearing. I will stand up so you can see it a little bit better and take off my jacket, but it's sleeveless, so I'm wearing a jacket because it's a little too chilly to not wear the jacket. So I have mentioned before that I really, really enjoy watching the It Is A Sarah podcast, and she often talks about the hinterland dresses that she has that one of her friends sewed for her. And so that had gotten me interested in this pattern, which is a pattern by Sew Liberated. And I had already started thinking about trying to make this dress. And then she, I think, mentioned on one of her episodes, I don't know how long ago, a few weeks ago, that she was going to be hosting a hinterland dress make along along with her friend Jessica who had sewn her original dresses um but it was going to be in Dutch only Sarah is from the Netherlands and does two episodes a week typically both in Dutch and in English so anyway she was going to be doing this hinterland dress make along but only in Dutch but I think she just had mentioned it on her English episode in passing maybe and then on Instagram, she had posted on one of her stories that So Liberated was doing a sale and that the pat I think maybe all of their patterns were like 30% off or something like that. And so I went ahead and bought the pattern because I just thought, well, that I just, you know, I was already interested in making it. And then she was doing this make along, not that I can understand much, any of it, <laughs> but uh Anyway, and then it was on sale, so it was just perfect timing. So I went ahead and bought it, and I was very excited to try it out. So I went through my fabric that I have in my stash, and I just wanted to see if I had anything that would be enough um, yardage to be able to make this dress. And I found this red gingham material that I just had on hand. And so it probably wouldn't, <laughs> I know it wouldn't have been my first choice, but I like it. I think it's a fun pattern, that red gingham. It's just 100% cotton that I got from Walmart. And uh, I had plenty, I think I needed to have three and a half or four yards to make the size that I wanted to make. And I had, I think, five yards. So it was enough for me to make this. And I kind of considered this to be a wearable muslin. So I just wanted to try out the pattern and hopefully work out any glitches or problems that I had with it so that I could, you know, kind of get the hang of it and see how it worked out. And it worked out pretty well. There's, it's not perfect, but I'm really happy with it. I, according to the measure, my measurements, I should have made a size 14, but that includes quite a bit of positive ease. And I usually don't like my clothes that oversized. So I actually sized down to a 10 which gave me only a couple of inches of positive ease throughout the bust area. The dress pattern also gives you a couple of options for sleeves. There's a sleeveless option, there's a short sleeve option, and there's a long sleeve option, and I made the sleeveless option. There's also differences in length that you can do, and I made the shorter length. And then there's also, there's also an option for the button placket. You can either do a half button placket that only, or bodice only it's called, that ends at the waist, which is what I did. You can also do a full button placket, which goes all the way down the front of the skirt. And then there's even another, they kind of mentioned that you can also just do one without a button placket at all, but that's not really in the original pattern. Then you can also, there's an option to include ties, waist ties, which I did include on mine. So let me see. I started this dress, I made it in just two days. I started it on, um, well, I started and finished it the weekend of October 1st, I guess I should say. I, um, let's see, what can I say about this? I, the, the pattern is really well written. I don't have a ton of experience making garments. I have made one other, well, I've made one other dress from a pattern before. Not really a pattern, following a YouTube video I made a dress before. No, that's not true. It was following a pattern that I found in a book by Gertie. I don't remember her last name, but I think if you've 
maybe you've heard of her, you know who I'm talking about. She's kind of well known for making vintage style dress patterns. And I had gotten, I had checked out a book from my library several years ago and made a dress from one of her books. And then I have kind of copied one of my dresses before, but I really didn't know what I was doing and I didn't do it really well. <laughs> I didn't copy or I didn't sew it really well. I didn't really know how to put the sleeves together and stuff like that. So I kind of just fudged my way through it. Anyway, and I've also made a skirt following a YouTube tutorial, but I don't have a ton of garment sewing experience. But this pattern was really good and going through great detail and going step by step in how to make this dress. So that was great. Um, I got all done with this and really the only problem that I had was with the buttonholes. I've never sewn buttonholes before. It has pockets and I've never sewn pockets before. That all went pretty well, or I, I thought it did. I've discovered that I've made a few mistakes that I didn't realize I had made beforehand, but anyway, it went pretty well. The, the major problem that I had was with my buttonhole maker on my sewing machine. So my sewing machine, I have a Singer heavy duty sewing machine and it has a buttonhole option and has a little buttonhole foot that you put your button into. And I watched a video tutorial on YouTube, how to use it. But for some reason, my machine doesn't always work. Here are my little sample pieces that you can see. I tried several times to get my buttonhole maker to work. And most of the time, let me see, there was a lot of trial and error. I want to see if I can find one that did the typical thing that we'll be able to show you. So this is typically what it did. It would do the bottom stitch. Well, what it's supposed to do is, if you don't know, it's supposed to do the bottom stitching, go up one side, do the top stitching, and then go down the other side. And then you're supposed to cut open the middle to open up your button hole. Anyway, mine would normally just do the bottom and then it would go up one side and then it would just stay up here in this corner forever and it wouldn't ever move again. And I didn't know why it was doing that. I called my mom because she's more experienced in sewing than I am. She didn't know why it was doing that. Sometimes it would work. There's one that worked, but most of the time it wouldn't and I couldn't figure out why. So what I ended up doing on mine on my actual dress is I just figured out how to do it. Like I would just kind of manually tell it what to do my sewing machine. So I just moved it between the zigzag stitch and the buttonhole stitch setting on my machine to kind of make my own buttonholes. And that worked out. It would, I kind of liked it better. That way I didn't have to worry about, is it going to work or is it going to mess up? I know I had the, I did this buttonhole first and I had to redo it twice before I was finally before I finally decided that I was just gonna do it my own way. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, so after I completed it, I thought it was all good, and then I realized that I somehow messed up the neck and armhole facings because I still had a raw edge showing. I still don't quite understand why that is but I have my husband's aunt that lives near me and she's a very good seamstress. She's experienced in sewing garments. And so I took this dress to her and asked her about it. And she gave me some advice on what to do the next time I make it. But basically what I had to do for this one, you won't be able to see it, but I just went back over the neck facing and did a zigzag stitch on that raw edge to, um, seal it so that it won't unravel, hopefully. I think that's all the details that I have to say about this. So it went pretty well. Oh, and then there's one more thing I discovered on the pockets that is wrong that I just discovered yesterday. <laughs> but anyway, I'll go ahead and stand up so you can see it. Oh, yeah, there's one, there's one more thing I want to tell you about something I modified to it too. It's made out of cotton, so it's a little wrinkly from you sitting, but that's okay. Like I said, it was just kind of a wearable muslin. So it's quite short on me. I am a tall person, I'm five foot 10. And so the dress just barely comes to the end of my fingertips. So I will always wear it with leggings underneath. So it's more of like a tunic dress for me. I um, love the fit of it. However, the bodice is, a, I mean, it, it fits, but there's no wiggle room in the bodice. And if I, 
I want to make another one and I want it to be more of a layering piece. And so on the next one, I've already started and I'll show you in a little bit, I'm going up to the size 12 to give me a little bit more wiggle room. I mean, there's some space here, but I just want a little bit more space in the bodice. Um, okay, the other, oh, on the pockets, I should mention that. So I just realized on the pockets that I have a raw edge. Maybe you won't be able to see it very well, but this is a raw edge on the inside of the pocket and that shouldn't be there. It should have been on the inside of the dress, but it is, the edge is zigzagged. So it shouldn't unravel, but it's just something odd that I just noticed. And then the other thing I changed, which maybe you just got a glimpse of there, I added an extra layer under my skirt here because this fabric was a little bit too thin on its own. So originally, this is the extra layer that I added, but it would have been similar to this. And maybe, maybe you won't be able to see, but when I was just wearing it with only one layer, you could see the black line where my leggings stop. And then you can see my skin here. <laughs> so I didn't like how see-through it was and I wanted to add an extra layer for co better coverage there on the skirt. So I just added an extra skirt to the inside and of course it doesn't have pockets, it's just the skirt. And I just hemmed it to be a tiny bit like a quarter inch shorter than the outside layer so it doesn't show as much. When I sit down it kind of shows a little bit but it's no big deal. And anyway, I like it though. That way if I, you know, I don't know, it's kind of fun to have an extra layer under there. <laughs> so the ties on the back, um, I don't know if they're really necessary. Oh, it's so wrinkled on the back <laughs> from me sitting. Ignore the wrinkles. Anyway, um, I don't think that the tie is really necessary. It doesn't really change much when I untie it. It's like basically the same. I don't know. I don't really see that it cinches in very much. Maybe as I'm going up in size, maybe I will wish I had it, but I'm not including it on my next one. So hopefully I don't regret that. Also on my next one, I'm going to be making the longer version, which I think is about six or seven inches longer. And I'm also planning on doing a full button plaque on my next one, but I am not going to actually make all of the buttonholes. <laughs> I'm only going to make buttonholes for the top half because I'm never going to want to unbutton the bottom half. I just want it there for looks. So I'm going to kind of, I'm going to put it there, but I'm not going to do a full button placket in that it can't, I'm not going to have it actually be able to open on the bottom. There'll be a faux full button placket. <laughs> anyway, here's my hinterland dress and I'm really happy with it. And I'm happy that I was able to make it and I'm hoping to make more. <laughs> so the make along, if you are interested in checking it out, I'm following it along on Instagram. Even like I said, I can't understand anything, although I translate what I can, but there's not a whole lot I can understand even then. But anyway, it is called the Hinterland York Mal. York is the Dutch word for dress. So anyway, it's kind of fun just to look on that hashtag to see what everybody else is doing. <laughs> and um, yeah, I wish I understood. I, I you know, because I, I would have loved to talk to other people about the neck facing instructions and be able to, you know, talk to other people about it. I've, I looked on YouTube to try to figure out what I was doing wrong on the neck facing that I still had a raw edge showing. And I couldn't find anything specifically for the hinterland dress online. Um, the So Liberated website does have a course that you can purchase that walks you through how to make the hinterland dress, but I think it's like $80 or something like that, and I didn't want to spend that much money. So anyway, I did find some YouTube videos showing how to do neck facing online, but this neck facing is pretty narrow compared to the ones that I saw on the YouTube tutorials. Anyway, I have a plan for what I'm going to do next and hopefully it will work out. <laughs> so I guess I'll go into talking about my next hinterland dress that I've started. I am using some brown 
corduroy material that I've had forever. It's like vintage material. <laughs> it's even, um, some of it is even faded on the back side. This piece doesn't happen to be faded, but on the skirt pieces that I have, some of it is faded, but not on the outside, just on the inside. Well, some of it was faded on the outside too, but I <laughs> cut around it <laughs> so that I would only have the good pieces. Anyway, I'm very, very excited about this brown corduroy material. And here is the bodice piece. I'm also making this one sleeveless. And like I said, I want it to be kind of a layering piece. So I'm planning on wearing shirts underneath it to, you know, be able to stay warm throughout the colder months. So I have already put in the bust starts, which I didn't mention on this one, but it has bust starts. And I have, you know, seamed the bodice together and I'm just working on the neck facing, but I've, I'm have i going to rip this off completely and start over because I'm again having the same problem. When I fold it over, the raw edge should be covered up and mine is not. So I'm going to sew it with less of a seam allowance when I first sew on the neck facing so that I have more material to fold over that raw edge. And hopefully that will work out for me. I'm using a contrast fabric, which is probably why I didn't notice that the neck facing was wrong on this until I was working on this one. And I could clearly see that that wasn't right to have that raw edge. And I didn't even notice it when I was making this one. But anyway, I'm using a contrast fabric, just a thinner 100% cotton fabric for the lining because I thought it would be easier to sew a thinner material for the facings instead of using the corduroy, since, since the corduroy is thicker. Um, but anyway, I am making, again, the size 12 for this one. And I hope I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna redo that neck facing and hopefully that will go well. I really hope that I will be able to make this and it will work out and it'll be a nice wearable dress as well. So that's all for those. I started I started with this one on October 2nd, right after I finished this one, but then I got sick and I was having trouble with the neck facing and so it's kind of not gone nearly, well, it's definitely not gone nearly as fast as this one went. Okay, um, so that is all for that. I am gonna go on to my other works in progress the first of which is my blanket that I am crocheting. This is called Faith. It is a pattern by Helen Shrimpton, and it's getting super big. I might have to stand up for this one too. Let's see, I wanna find my progress keeper. Here it is. This adorable progress keeper was crocheted by my cousin Allie, sweet little pumpkin. And I'm so happy to have it in use. She gifted it to me last fall, or maybe it was kind of already close to Christmas by the time I got it. I'm not really sure, but I don't think I've been able to use it yet until this fall. Anyway, I'm very happy to have it in use. So that's marking where I was last time I showed off this project. So I've made a few more rounds on this project and it is rather big. I think I can fit it. Well, yeah, you can pretty much see the length of it here. Can see how big it's getting. It is a square. So, oops. There you can see how it's looking. I love it so much. Last time I recorded, I was having trouble figuring out the star stitch that I was on. And a few people commented and left me suggestions of some tutorials that I could watch. The one that I ended up watching and really being able to understand it was recommended by a viewer named Linda. Thank you. And it was called Star, no, Crochet Star Stitch Made Easy by Crystal of Ba O Day. So I will link to that tutorial below in case any of you are interested in how to make this star stitch. But that is what is right here. So that was great. I was able to understand how to make it exactly. I just wasn't sure by looking, by reading the instructions. And then I even went to the 
picture tutorial for this pattern and that didn't help me either on this stitch. So I was really happy to have a visual video tutorial that I could go to to figure out this stitch. And it's beautiful. So anyway, then the next um, section here is the same stitch as what I did down on that area with the dark blue. But um, instead I kind of reversed the dark and light colors kind of. <laughs> anyway, the um, rest of the stitches have been pretty very easy to understand. I don't think I learned anything new besides the star stitch. Otherwise, it's just been basic single crochet, double crochet, or treble crochet maybe on these stitches. But really, really fun and easy. All of this yarn is worsted weight, 100% acrylic yarn. Most of it was in my stash, and I'm just using it up to use it up. <laughs> and I wanted to, I just had a bunch of yarn in my stash that I wanted to use up and I put some of it together and I loved how the colors looked together. And so that's what motivated me to try out this pattern. And I am using a J, J maybe? No, I don't really remember. Let me check what hook size I'm using. It's been on the hook for a while now. I'm using an I 5.5 millimeter needle. I started this on August, August 2nd. I have just finished part. Oh, no, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. I think maybe I just finished part four. I think so. So I'm halfway because there's eight parts. So it's still ha I still have a long ways to go on this. <laughs> It'll be really big, but I suppose the sections are like the actual rounds. There's going to be less rounds included in each part from now on, I would think, as it grows. So we'll see. But one more look at it in its entirety so far. I think it's very pretty and I am very happy working on it. It is a lot of fun and it's the perfect timing now that it's gotten bigger and the weather's cooled off and so it's really comforting to be under this blanket while I'm crocheting it. It's great. I'm happy about that. Okay, my next work in progress is being held in this bag, which I made myself. And this is the Hereth shawl that I am knitting. It is a design by Claire Walls of Flossy Knits. And I've made a lot of progress on this, which I'm very happy about. It is getting smaller and smaller as I work on it. So that's really encouraging as I make each round on every right side row, I decrease a stitch. And so it gets smaller and smaller as I go. So, you can see that progress keeper way down there. That's where I was last time I recorded. So I've added, I basically doubled the depth of this shawl since the last time I recorded. So that was great. So you start off this shawl casting on all of the stitches, which is over 200 stitches. And then, like I said, you decrease as you go along, which is a nice aspect of it. This side panel is so beautiful and I have done a total of, well, four different sections, I guess you can kind of see. <laughs> um, so here's the first section where I did the lace panel on both of the outside sections and then one in the middle and then you just um, alternate that as you go along. So I'm ready to start doing another um, section where both outside panels are going to be worked. And I've just lost stitches. Just lost stitches. <laughs> my progress keeper went down my dress. <laughs> my stitch marker. <gasps> okay. Problems. All right, here we go. Putting the stitches back on. Uh, okay. 
Oh, I lost that very first stitch. I'll fix it later. I mean, it's uh, dropped back one. Okay, anyway. Golly. I thought since I had less stitches on my needles, now I wouldn't have that problem. <laughs> anyway, I'm really enjoying this project. It is very easy. Besides those lace panels, you just are working in plain garter stitch, which is awesome. I love it. Here are all of the stitches I have already decreased, so you can kind of get an idea maybe of how it's looking. It's kind of hard to hold it up, but hopefully you get an idea. The yarn that I'm using is Knit Picks Palette in the Oregon Coast Heather colorway, which I just absolutely love this colorway. I think it's so beautiful. It has lots of variation of color in it when you look up close. It is a fingering weight yarn and I'm holding it double. So I'm holding two strands together. It is 100% non-superwash Peruvian Highland wool. And I'm using the recommended needles, which are sevens, I think. It's not on that one. Are these fixed? Oh, it is a fixed pair. On the interchangeable set, it's written on both needles, but on the fixed pair, it's only written on one needle. The size. Yes, seven, 4.5 millimeter needles. All right, so that is great. And I'm excited to continue to work on this, especially as it's decreasing. And I'm really able to tell now that the rows are working up a lot faster than they used to, of course. But it's, you know, some at first it's not really noticeable. It's like, eh, it doesn't seem to be changing much. But now that I've worked on it more and it's really decreasing, I can really tell that the rows are fast now. The next project I'm working on is being held in this cute little bag that was gifted to me by Danielle of Midwest Stitches. And my son crocheted this little pole thing for it. <laughs> Zipper pole. And, oh, this is a funny story. So these are my Knit Picks Felici socks for the month of October. And I am working through my Knit Picks Felici stash, working up one colorway per month. And, um... Anyway, the yarn that I picked out, the colorway that I picked out for the month of October is this fun colorway called Carrot Cake. And I've had this in my stash for a long time. Knit Picks Felici is fingering weight, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And I like my uh, socks to match normally. So I was... Um, pulling out you know, the yarn to try to get it to start at the same color stripe so that they would match. And I started with a cream color like this. And then it worked into the green for the stripe. And then it did the cream. And I was almost done with my ribbing and then I noticed that this one had orange, which I was expecting. But then the other sock has pink next. <laughs> so the yarns were skeined up in reverse order. So one of my skeins is skeined up opposite of the other. And I was going to cut my yarn and figure it out or rewind it. But then I was like, no, I'll just keep them because I think it'll be kind of fun. And really the only stripes that are going to be different are the orange and pink stripes. And every other stripe is going to match. The creams are all going to match up. The greens are going to match up. So I think it'll be kind of a fun little quirky thing. So I just left it and I'm happy that I did. I am also working through my collection of patterns by Kay Litton of Crazy Sock Lady Designs as I'm working through my Knit Picks Felici stash. So these socks are called On the Hill socks. And I absolutely love them. Let's see, I'm going to find my page in my book on them. So I am, again, making the medium size, size, which is typical when I make K's pattern. So it is a 64 stitch count. I'm using US 0 2 millimeter needles. And it's a 2 by 2 ribbing for 20 rounds. And then the pattern has these beautiful cables and some twisted stitches in them. I don't know if you can see it very well. 
there. That's a little better. I just think it's beautiful. I really, really love working cables into socks, even with the self striping. I think it's super fun. So I believe that this pattern was originally designed with Rhinebeck in mind on the hill where people meet when they go to the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. Is that what it's called? <laughs> anyway, that's in October, and so I thought it would be fitting to make this pattern in the month of October as well. And I love how it's working up. The back side is just plain stockinette, and then the patterning is along the front. Here is another progress keeper that my cousin Allie made. Another pumpkin, but this one made out of polymer clay. So cute. Anyway, these are working up really well. I'm not sure what I shall, will do for the heels. I always put in a contrast color for my heels, typically, when I do self-striping yarn, and I'm not sure what color to add in for the heels. I might have some purple that would work. That would be kind of fun, because I think these colors really remind me of Halloween. So purple might be a fun addition. I thought about black, but that might be too stark of a contrast and too, I don't know. I'll have to look through my stash and see what options I have that would work for a contrast heel. But I'm happy with these. It's kind of a fun accident that the stripes are opposite of each other. I love using this bag for my uh, Knit Picks Felici because it just works so well to have my two skeins fitted in this bag. It's the, the perfect size. So I like using this bag for my socks. I am making another pair of socks and these are being held in another bag that I made myself. And I am making another patterned sock, but I, I didn't intend to originally go off pattern, <laughs> but I've really gone quite off pattern with these socks. The original pattern that I've started with is the Lattice Topped Socks by Kay Jones of Bakery Bears. And, well, I guess, no, I have already made some modifications. I was gonna say, I guess I haven't changed anything yet, but no, I have. Anyway, <laughs> I'm making the medium size for these as well, which is, again, is a 64 stitch count. And again, it is a two by two. Oh, there's so many leaves falling just now. <laughs> Pretty. Um, anyway, uh, another two by two ribbing, but this one is only for 15 rounds, and that is according to the pattern. After the ribbing, though, I was supposed to do some striping up here at the top, but I decided not to do that because for two reasons. One, the two yarns that I'm using, um, I dyed both of them. Actually, these did have names. I used to um, dye yarn and sell it online and I don't do that any longer but these were actually both colors that I sold in my shop so this green color was called life giving and then the variegated speckled color is called harvest anyway I don't have a lot of that harvest colorway um well I have about 60 grams but in the pattern, she says, you really should have 100 grams of each. I probably wouldn't need it. Maybe I would have been okay just to, I probably would have been okay to make the pattern as it's called for and still had enough yarn, but I wasn't really confident and I don't want to run out. So anyway, you're supposed to do some striping of the two different colors before the lattice top section, but I just decided to do plain green, both because I have more of the green yarn and because I'm making my socks two at a time as I normally do. And if I did stripes, then I would have to have four balls of yarn in the works at once. And that was, that's more than I want to do. That's more than I want to deal with. So <laughs> anyway, I, both of the yarns are fingering weight, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. I'm using US 0 2 millimeter needles again. And... So I did follow the pattern for the lattice top. Not sure if you can really see the detail of it because the yarn is quite speckled. But you can kind of get an idea of it. So after the lattice top section, which I finished, you're again supposed to go into some more striping. Again, I'm not doing that. I'm just gonna be doing plain green. And 
Then after a few rows of striping, you're supposed to go into knitting with the this as your main color. But I've decided to change it all up. And I'm just going to, so you're supposed to use this as your main color and then use your contrast color, which should be my green, for the heels and the toes. But I have changed it around and now from now on, I'm just going to be using the green for the remainder of the leg and then I'm gonna use this um, harvest color for my heels and my toes since I don't have as much of that color. And also she has a different kind of heel. She has a butterfly heel in her pattern, but I'm just gonna make a slip stitch heel flat because I know that and I know it fits and I'm not interested in trying a new heel at this moment. Oh, I forgot to mention that I'm making these socks for my mother-in-law for a Christmas present. So anyway, I know that the heel flap, the slip stitch heel flap fits my mother-in-law and I don't wanna try a new heel on a pair of socks that are not gonna be for me in case it doesn't work out. Um, also for the toe, I'm just gonna do, I always do K Litton's toe pattern <laughs> for my socks and I'm just gonna do that again. I can't remember what is included in this pattern, but I'm pretty sure it's different than what I'm used to for my toe decreases. So basically from now on, I'm really not following the pattern. I'm just kind of doing my own thing, but I did follow the pattern for the lattice top. <laughs> anyway. It's really a very pretty pattern and I, I highly recommend it. I have nothing wrong with the pattern. I've just made changes because of my own situation and what I'm dealing with as far as yarn management and well, as I've already explained. So anyway, I <laughs> have those on the go. And so from now on, they're gonna be a super easy vanilla pair of socks. So they'll be nice to have on the go and I won't have to worry about following a pattern really it'll be mindless for me so that's nice my last work in progress is being held in this bag that was gifted to me by some family friends and I love it and in here I am knitting another another muscle burra hat so my uh, kids and I go to a Wednesday night uh, kids group at our church and I help out with that and we always do a service project every month. And for the month of October, we are collecting hats and gloves to give to a local homeless shelter. And I thought it would be, well, I had actually already planned on working up some yarn that I had in my stash into some muscle bar hats to give as gifts. And so I wanted to make one to give to this service project as well. So I am making the muscle bar hat, which is a pattern by Yazolda Teague. And I am using up some yarn that was gifted to me by Tammy, a viewer of this channel. And sh this section uh, was made using some mystery yarn that she sent to me, but I love it. It was a pretty good sized ball. Did I weigh it? I don't think I weighed it to know how much it was. But anyway, as you can see, it worked up to be quite a la large section. No, I didn't weigh it. I'm not sure I should have, but anyway, it was a pretty big size ball. Like it was about the size of a softball maybe. <laughs> anyway, um, I really love how it micro striped, kind of spiraled around the hat. I just love those colors. I think it will be great. You know, it could be fitting for both a man or a woman. It wouldn't matter. And anyway, I just used it up until I was almost done. I did save a little ball to add a few extra squares to my granny's daughter afghan that i am working on um so i just saved a little ball so i could make maybe 10 squares to add to that blanket and anyway i used up most of what i had and then i've just switched to a black yarn which is also one that was gifted to me by tammy it is yarn inspirations karen simply soft in the black colorway they're both worsted weight, 100% acrylic yarns. Um, this this pattern has some, mod um, some uh, what do I wanna say? Um, I can't think of the word, but you can make this hat in, the original pattern is written to be made using fingering to DK weight yarn, but I'm using worsted weight. This is the third time I've made 
the Muscle Burger hat using worsted weight yarn. And it works up pretty well for me. I just use uh, six four millimeter needles and then I follow the adult medium size. The six millimeter or the four millimeter needles give me a gauge of five stitches to one inch. So that's the loosest gauge that is included with the pattern, but it works for me. Um, so again, I'm making the medium size, but I am going to knit it a little bit longer, more to be the length of the adult large size, so that it, I like to have extra length so it has a lot of room to roll up the brim and have a lot of warmth over the ear section. The length that I got out of that variegated yarn was 13 inches. So that's more than half of the total of the length that I will need. Um, but anyway, this hat, I'm sure you're familiar with it. I, as I've, I've mentioned it many times on this uh, channel before, but you just knit a really long tube increasing at the beginning, decreasing at the other end, and then you fold the hat in on itself so that it has a double layer. And then it also has a brim, like I showed you on that one. I already kind of showed you one, right? So it looks like this, so you can have a brim and it has a double layer of warmth in it. So anyway, this is another really great mindless project, but I do want to get it done within this month so I can gift it to our church. So I don't want it to sit too long, but you know, I've already crossed the halfway point and with that worsted weight yarn, it works up really quickly. So that's great. Those are all of my works in progress that I have to share with you. So I think that's everything. I feel like I got through everything quicker than I thought I would. So that's good because otherwise it would be really long. Um, so anyway, I hope that you all enjoyed watching and seeing what things I have been working on lately. I hope you all are doing really well and I hope you take care for the next couple of weeks until I record a new episode. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.